What's up guys, it's Chuck from Brady Adventures, and today we're going to get some power wired up inside the Roof Nest Falcon. I hope this video helps you guys get some ideas of how you could supply power inside your rooftop tent. And if you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, click the bell so you get alerts, and leave us any questions that you have in the comments below. Enjoy. I wanted to make sure that we'd have the ability to charge our phones or potentially plug any other items in that we might bring along and end up wanting to use up in the nest. Um, I didn't like the idea of running extension cords and doing things like that. The main thing I want to be able to do is set up really quickly and have everything I need. All of these items that we're using, we got on Amazon. You can find links to all of them in the description below. I am going to drill a hole through the bottom of the tent up towards the front. They're going to be hooked up to my auxiliary battery through this fuse in this distribution block. And I got these just because I have so many wires going up to the auxiliary battery right now. This is going to make everything a lot cleaner. It's been something that I've wanted to do for a while. Um, these are both Blue C items. Um, then the wiring from the auxiliary battery is going to go up to an Anderson style connector that will be mounted to the bottom of the roof rack. The Anderson connectors didn't work out. It said they were for 10 gauge wire, but I couldn't get the wire to crimp in there properly, so I'm going to use these MC4 solar connectors. When I take the tent off, I'll be able to just disconnect this connector and lift the tent off. The wire from the Anderson connector will be going through this RV waterproof membrane wire access, normally used for solar panels, but this will be secured to the bottom of the tent. The wires will um, I'm going to have two 10 gauge wires that are going to feed through this up into the inside of the tent and they are going to be wired to this 30 amp breaker. Um, I decided to use a 30 amp breaker. It is the smallest that I could find and I wanted to have a switch up in the cab and there wasn't anything that I could find that was going to be easily mounted and I decided that fusing the electrical things that I have running up there through a breaker like this um, would be a little extra protection and this functions as a switch. So when I leave the tent, I can hit this little button and there's no power being pulled off the auxiliary battery. And then when I go up in the tent and I want to turn things on, I flip this on. So this is going to be wired directly to this LED strip controller right here that's going to control LED lighting that we have around the inside of the top of the tent. And then also wired to this power distribution phone charger thing. This has four USB charging ports and then three regular 12 volt sockets. And two of them are sort of the standard kind and then it's nicely labeled with a little cigarette so you know this one can use a regular cigarette lighter. There are dozens and dozens of them out there. The main reason I chose this one, pretty cool, it's got a little LED readout of your battery voltage which is going to be nice to know if I'm up in the tent to see how the auxiliary battery is doing and then also has a switch on the back so if I choose to minimize my power usage I can switch this off separately um, these little controllers for the LED strips tend to pull a little bit of juice even if the lights are out so it'll be nice to be able to turn just this off or both things off with the breaker. 30 amps is a little bit much. Uh, I'm going to put a 15 amp fuse in this and wire both of these to this and to the larger breaker just for a little added protection. I plan to secure these things to the top of the roof nest with some of this VHB 3M double sided tape. Um, I also have lots of wire sheathing and shrink wrap and wire connectors and things to make sure everything's neat and protected from the elements so that it will last the long term. So now we're going to get up in the tent, get the mattress out of there, clean everything up, and start putting all this stuff in. I'm going to go through right here in this corner, um, five and a half inches in in each direction. It's going to go right in between two of my slats in the front runner and directly where the sunroof is so it's easy to plug in and unplug. So I think I'm going to have this basically lined up then I'm going to have the LED controller, and then I'm going to have my power station right here. Okay, first thing I had to do was cut this power adapter plug off and get to the raw wires. I don't like this, this kind of wiring. This is wired with a the hot wire in the middle, 
and the ground on the outside. This is kind of a pain in the butt to splice. All right, let's hope these are all good. As you can see, I'm still using a blowtorch, and I don't recommend this method of shrinking your shrink wrap. Oh man, I pretty much got everything wired up. So I've got everything zip tied. This is not quite as neat as I normally like to have things, but it'll suffice. So this will be up on the ceiling here, and this wire will go down, these wires will go down under the mattress. I'm gonna splice in my 15 amp fuse right here. So that'll be actually below the mattress. The two-sided tape, it's a real pain in the butt to get the backing off of it. But once you do and you get it mounted up on whatever you're sticking it to, it is not gonna come off. And now I'm just gonna check for interference for my feet. The hole that I'm drilling is gonna go right in between these two slats and a little ways in. I've measured it a few times. I'm gonna put this right up here. This is gonna butt right up against the front of the tent. So I wanna make sure where I drill the hole, it's gonna come down and the wires will still be able to get out of this housing pretty easily. So I'm gonna drill this thing. All right, my camera wasn't going, but I just drilled a hole right there. Dang it. I hate it when that happens. I put some sheathing, some of this plastic sheathing over the wire to go in the hole. Now I'm gonna put some black silicone around this into the hole, even though there's a waterproof membrane down there that I'm gonna be putting over it. I just wanna protect it from moisture as much as I can. I'm gonna use these MC4 solar connectors. And I know these work will, will work with this wire because I've used them a bunch of times. I finally got a heat gun. The connectors screw on to create a watertight seal. And now it's time to get everything hooked up, routed, and zip-tied to the rack. Alright guys, so this is the finished product. Uh, we've got our breaker that's controlling everything, a little power distribution center, and our LED light controller. You can see the LED lights over here. So if I turn on the breaker, that turns on the LEDs back to the previous setting that I had. And then I can control them here, turn them on and off. Um, a couple other little features. You can also control them with the phone. And then for my power distribution center, there's a switch down here, which I can switch to turn it on. You can see the status of my batteries there. 13.1 volts, not too bad. You can tell if it's on or not. I think these actually have, yeah. So these have a slight green light. So if you have them kind of see them in the dark so I should be able to power anything any of the kind of small items that I want to and charge my phone no problem another cool thing about having this right over on the side by our pocket in the roof nest is I can plug my phone in and drop it right in the pocket there to charge that's right oh Cut. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. And always feel free to leave us any comments or questions that you might have.